Hey everyone, it is Skyler here. And in this video, we are going to be stress testing the Baofeng UV5R. It's a handheld radio transceiver, Chinese, for about $25 on sites such as Amazon. We're going to be testing the power output for about five minutes um, through a demi load or a simulated antenna. Then we're going to put a short circuit on the output of this antenna connector and see how well the output handles. And we're also going to have an open circuit test. Each of these will cause a high voltage standing wave ratio and cause theoretically the transistors inside the radio to get hot and burn out potentially. We're also going to inject a lot of RF into this receiver. We're going to stress test the receiver to see how much power into it it can handle before it has a problem and check the sensitivity before and after all of this testing. So without further ado, let's get into the video and hope you enjoy. So here I've got the Baofeng UV5R right on front of us and if I power it on We've got a frequency in the 440 band and the 2 meter band set on this radio right now. So I'm now going to connect the output of this radio to a piece of coax. And this coax will head off to this dummy load or offset attenuator which will drop the power for my meter to uh, accurately be able to read it without damaging it. And it will also suck, suck up all the power as heat in here, so we won't be sending it off to this unit to the left. So now that that's connected, we'll head over to the service monitor. Okay, I'm gonna configure the RF offset of this offset attenuator I just showed as negative 30 dB as specified. So I'm going to go to the RF level offset and turn that on, negative 30 dB input and output on the port. And we're gonna display as frequency, because we want to be using frequencies instead of channelized features, and turn the RF offset off. Now let's go to transmitter test, and we're going to put in the frequency that our radio was on. Top band was on 442.950. And we're showing 4.15 watts output. We might be losing a little bit through the loss of the coax and different things, but about 4 watt. And I'll put the VHF end in on 146. And transmit from the VHF end. We have about the same amount of power. So it probably probably it's closer to five, but all my coax is losing it. So we're gonna reference everything to around four watts RF output. So if I hold the transmit button here and just, I'll hold this for around five minutes. I turn the timeout timer off and we'll just wait and see what the power looks like about five minutes later. We're just transmitting into a perfect dummy load and uh, out of the output tap of the dummy load we're measuring the RF power going into it. So I'll be back in about five minutes. And after about five minutes, it looks like our power output is still reasonable, 3.9 watts, probably closer to 4.9 due to all the coax loss, but good reference and the radio obviously can put out power for a good amount of time through the dummy load on a simulated perfect matched antenna. Also I put a fresh battery at the beginning. Next we're going to give it the open circuit test. So I'm gonna unscrew 
the antenna connectors off of this. And basically all we have to do for this test is hold the transmitter down for five minutes with no antenna on it. So this will cause an open circuit. The impedance should be higher, so the radio on this test probably will not suffer. So I'll just start transmitting now, and I'll be back in after this test is done. Looks like we've still got 4 watts on UHF. and almost four watts on VHF, so the output power has not been affected by the high SWR of the open circuit. Now let's try a short circuit, and this will be a low impedance load, so this might actually affect the finals more. So I'll do five minutes of short circuit on both UHF and VHF, and we will then check power output after we've had it transmit on each for about five minutes. So here's the short circuit connector I just put together. And let's confirm by turning on my meter here. And I'll just ohm out between the shield and the center connector. And if it beeps, that means we've got a short. So we've got a short. So here's my little short stub. And we'll connect this right on to the radio here. So we've got a female to female to get this male onto this male connector on the balfoon. I'll transmit both on 2 meters and 440 for about 5 minutes each and we'll come back and see if the power output has been affected. Okay so I'm back. I have been transmitting for 5 minutes on each band into this short circuit and we're still at 3.9 watts on UHF and we're a little bit lower on VHF 3.84 but definitely nothing nothing that blew out our transmitter or anything so and it could have just been the fact that it's been getting warm and uh, warmth will affect the transmit power if it's properly designed it'll uh, cut down a little bit so overall a open circuit and a short circuit does not damage the Baofeng UV5R. I'm not recommending you try it on your emergency radio if uh, if you rely on that, but I would definitely uh, say it's only $25, so you're not going to lose a lot if you have a bad antenna and it happens to blow out, but on this test it looks like the transmitter is okay. So now let's go on to the receiver and see how much power we can put in on this receiver without the receiver burning up. Okay, so I've gone to the receiver menu, I just turned up the volume on the radio, and we've got an amplitude of negative 110 decibel milliwatts on our receiver right now. So I'm going to decrease this. Turn the volume down on my receiver, and it looks like squelch breaks at a whopping negative 130 dBm, and that's 0 0.07 microvolts. Um, so the squelch sensitivity is definitely pretty good. Let's start adding power into the receiver. Okay, so I have generated an 18 dBm signal on the service monitor coming into here, which is equal to... 63 milliwatts so there's 63 milliwatts right on this receiver's input and uh, it's receiving it just fine so now if I go back to a weak signal the receiver is just fine coping with weak signals like it was before okay so I've got an ICOM handheld connected directly via an SMA to SMA jumper to this Baofeng handheld and I'm going to transmit directly from here into here to stress test the receiver. So right now we're at 50 milliwatts and the receiver is working just fine. You can hear that feedback when I turn up the volume obviously. And um, But we are already at 60 milliwatts through the service monitor. So let's do 
low power. Okay, there's four settings. So low power is half a watt, medium is one watt, and high power is five watts. So I'll give it medium power, the RF input. So we just put our injecting half, half a watt directly into here. The receiver is still working right now, um, but we'll have to test to see how the receiver sensitivity is once we put it back on the monitor. And now I'm gonna blast five watts directly onto the receiver input. So we just did high power, five watts, and we've got five watts going directly into this receiver. Transmitting, let me hold it for a little bit. 10 seconds or so. Still obviously receiving the audio. I don't know if the sensitivity though is gonna be damaged by this much power right on the input. Let's do the same on 146. and do high power. Okay, so we're injecting 146 megahertz, a signal directly in. And it looks like it's receiving okay. Let's put it back on the service monitor and see if we've caused any damage to the receiver. I'll give this 20 more seconds or so of RF here. And uh, that should be good. Ooh, I definitely feel heat right here. Definitely heat on this end where the RF is coming out of the receiver. Okay, I have put the receiver back on the service monitor and I still hear audio and noise at a weak signal of negative 129 dBm. Yep, squelch is still breaking around 130, negative 130 dBm. And on the 146 and Yep, we still have weak signal response. The receiver seems to be just fine after injecting a five watt signal right in on the receiver's front end. So, seems like it's pretty robust so far. Well, in this video, to summarize, we tested the transmitter through a short circuit, an open circuit, and a normal antenna load for about five minutes each time on both UHF and VHF frequency bands. We tested the receiver by injecting a large amount of power right in on the receiver's jack while it's receiving. We put five watts directly in here from another radio, and it seemed to perform just fine with all that. So next video, we will be physically testing this for burning it, running over it, throwing it around, and seeing what will damage it to the most. And please subscribe for more videos coming up soon. Thanks.